SMU wasn't done uh, as far as big recruiting news. Um, and uh, look, this news came down um, on Sunday uh, off the heels of SMU landing a commitment from 2025 four-star athlete Demetrius Brisbane uh, from Tyler Chapel Hill. His teammate, Ricky Stewart Jr., we talked about him last week on the podcast. Well, lo and behold, he dialed up the staff on Sunday and said, I'm ready to make my decision, and he committed to SMU. This is a massive addition for the uh, SMU uh, staff. Um, he's a 2025 running back that rushed for over 2,200 yards and 18 touchdowns on 236 carries, so really around that nine yards per carry range that um, you know we talked about last week on the podcast. That's kind of where you want to be. We'll have a big breakdown with Charles Power, our um, national recruiting analyst who does our rankings add on three breaking down Ricky Stewart and Demetrius Brisbane's game. Um, but SMU gets a 5'11, 180 pound running back who sits inside our top 150 overall prospects in the country. Number 14 running back nationally for on three. Uh, he's a top 250 overall prospect on the on three industry ranking. He had Alabama, Arkansas, Baylor, Michigan, Ole Miss, TCU, um, and other offers to his name uh, in early May. He said that Alabama was his leader. And, you know, when it came down to it, SMU has had him on campus multiple times. And I think the biggest thing for both of these players, and we've kind of talked about it, and, and I dropped some more notes at OnThePonyExpress.com about uh, Ricky and his decision and, and Demetrius as well. But relationships were key here. You know, Kyle Cooper... Keenan Hall, um, the entire staff, you know, really did a nice job here recruiting him, Tyler Foster, guys like that. And for two East Texas players and two East Texas stars to go ahead and make that decision and commit to SMU, it says a lot about the job SMU's done recruiting them. Uh, this was not a situation where SMU was like, come on, come on, come on, let's, let's jump on this. You know, you like us, commit and then see what happens. SMU, and this is kind of the way, it, remember, we, when we talked about like Jordan Hudson and Chase Biddle and guys like that earlier um, in these recruiting cycles in the past, we've said, you know, SMU doesn't want to pop them, you know, coming off their junior year or early in the summer before their senior year. They, they wanted to wait. They wanted to have the best opportunity to get them but also hold on to them and to get a guy like Ricky Stewart and Demetrius Brisbane on board so early. Um, this is one of those things where for SMU, you just are, what are you going to say? No, this is a great opportunity for SMU to now try and hold on to these recruit, these commits, you know, Chase Biddle, Jordan Hudson, they did it, uh, you know, the 4th of July um, going into their senior year, at least um, in uh, Jordan Hudson's uh, case, which, look, they had to battle. They had to hold on. Obviously, things changed when when the coaching staff turned over at SMU. Um, but when it comes to holding on to guys like this, they still have a whole junior year. They still have, I mean, what, almost – almost two years until they sign. Um, I guess it would be about a year and a half. To get them on board this early is not something that should necessarily scare SMU fans. Um, you want guys that are this highly touted and that are going to be a battle. And I, I just go to the fact that this wasn't a pressing commitment that they made. They weren't you know, full court pressing them to go ahead and make the decision. They didn't want that. They don't, you know, if you're asking me, you don't want these guys to make the decision just on a whim. And especially in Ricky Stewart's case, he came off of that visit where he was on campus for uh, the seven on seven tournament. And he ends up going back home and saying, you know what? I do want to be a part of that program. And uh, they got the call. Um, on on Sunday and Rhett Lashley and the staff. And before you know it, he was committed. And I, I think for them, the way it went down is is how they'd like it to. 
you don't want to be pressing. You don't want to be pushing these guys to do something that is short-sighted. And it's a credit to the way they've recruited him because they've had him on campus multiple times, because they showed them love. They, they cruised right through Chapel Hill during the evaluation period and made sure they knew they were really high on their board. And, you know, if you're SMU, you just got to sit back now and you got to reset and you got to double down on your efforts and make make sure they always feel at home because that's what brought them there is you get that home feeling because of the relationships. You know, Demetrius Brisbane just had picked up a Texas offer and instead now he's able to, um, you know, go and 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 commit to SMU just days after that. And I think that just says a lot about how they recruited him. And so uh, we'll, cons- we'll uh, you know, really, um, you know, follow these guys, of course, and see how it pans out. Uh, but the, the good news is just not stop for Rhett Lashley and his staff. Um, this, is, this is a red-hot recruiting program. We've talked about it multiple times on this podcast uh, during the late spring and kind of previewing the, the summer. Um, SMU's getting hot. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's not done yet. Um, so um, I'm dropping my class prediction piece at OnThePonyExpress.com here on Wednesday morning. So check that out. Again, another reason to jump on board with the um, special, a dollar for three months to get those. Um, but one thing that I also want to announce is we've created a members-only portion of our YouTube channel. And the first video debuts... Wednesday. And we're going to do uh, for $3 a month, one once a week in-depth podcasts where it's basically unfiltered. Uh, It's not hiding and protecting things for subscribers. You're paying to read it or, or you're paying to listen to it. And so I'm excited about that. I want that community to be like our community at OnThePonyExpress.com where you guys kind of ask for something and I deliver um, because right now I'm doing doing what I think is the best for the podcast and doing everything that I can to bring you guys good content. But I also have a site to run. The way to bring you guys more podcasts is to, you know, bring in a little bit more money on it. So um, it'll be YouTube only until Spotify and Apple start doing premium podcasts. Um, but uh, if you're interested in it, check it out. If you have questions, email me, Twitter DM me, um, all of those things. I'm excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're an OnThePonyExpress.com subscriber, there's not going to be things that you're missing on the YouTube channel. All the things that we talk about are going to be on the site. But to add context, to go more in-depth, that isn't in a free space. That was the best way that I could go about it for you guys. um, To give you guys a little extra something to listen to, um, whether it's at work or on the car ride home. So I'm excited about it. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's a new venture for me, um, but we're excited about that. So you can check it out on the community tab of our YouTube channel.